Hello there and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we are going to be continuing our conversation on psychological disorders as we review Unit 8, Topic 7 of AP Psychology, an introduction to the treatment of psychological disorders. As always, if you find value in these topic review videos, consider subscribing. It helps support the channel and make sure you don't miss out on any future videos. The treatment of mental illness has been a whirlwind over the last 100 plus years. There have been extremely harsh tactics to very gentle ones, as well as a large array of different cultural approaches to different disorders. In this video, we're going to be focusing on contributions of different methods and psychologists over the years. To start, let's talk about two of the main classifications of therapies in the Western world. The first is a psychological approach called psychotherapy. This is where a therapist will use psychological techniques to help the client mentally grow as a person or walk them through different challenges they face. Psychological techniques are achieved by interacting and talking to the client by a licensed professional. The second category is psychopharmacology, which includes biomedical therapy, which is when a person is treated by medicine or other physical therapies. Many times the two types of therapy will be combined depending on what the diagnosis is. We can see that there are a variety of different important figures that have expanded our understanding of disorders and their treatments. Most of these psychologists will be familiar to you. First we can look at Sigmund Freud. He provided the first major psychological therapy. It was known as psychoanalysis. The basis of psychoanalysis is that childhood experiences are the root of what makes us who we are as adults. Remember, Freud was all about the unconscious mind. This method would try to get you to unearth your unconscious mind by using free association. Remember, this is when a psychologist would say a word or show you an image and you'd say whatever comes to mind. If you pause, the psychologist would then record that resistance. Resistance often indicated that something in your unconscious mind was blocking you. They would also use dream analysis to uncover the root of the problem. As they are listening to you, they will interpret what they are hearing and provide insight that may guide you along the way. All of these techniques together would help give the psychologist an interpretation of what conflicts could be happening within the individual's unconscious mind. Psychoanalysis has evolved to an approach called psychodynamic, which we'll talk about more in our next video. Next we have Carl Rogers. His humanistic technique is called a client-centered therapy. This therapy is known as a non-directive, which means that the therapist does not give advice or tell the individual what things mean. They just set up an environment where the individual can talk freely. As the therapist listens, they will clarify and reflect back to what the client is saying to help provide the individual a better understanding of themselves. With continued therapy, a client can work through conflicts, improve their self-understanding, and change behaviors that they think they need to work on. An important part of this therapy is that the therapist is accepting, respectful, and empathetic to the individual. We can also look at the work of Mary Cover Jones, who was a behavioral psychologist. Using counter-conditioning, her procedures were done in 1924, but this groundbreaking research was mostly dismissed until the 1970s, when Joseph Wolpe redefined her techniques into what is known today as exposure therapy. Mary Cover Jones was interested in John B. Watson's Little Albert experiment. If you remember this experiment, it installed fear in a little boy after a white rat was presented every time a bell rang. Cover Jones wondered if instead of instilling fear in a child, you could take the fear away. And that's what led her experiment, known as the Little Peter experiment. Peter was a three-year-old who was afraid of rabbits and other furry things. She set up an experiment where she started with the rabbit being very far away from Peter, but in the same room. Then she would give Peter candy when ever she would gradually bring the rabbit closer. Eventually, he was no longer afraid and was even able to pet the rabbit. Joseph Wolpe took this research and refined it into the exposure therapy. This treatment involves repeatedly exposing the person to the stimulus that frightens them in a controlled setting. This helps the individual become used to the stimuli, which decreases their anxieties over time. The person will feel that with more exposure, nothing bad will happen to them, and they'll start to become more confident in themselves that they can overcome their fear. Then there's B.F. Skinner. Hopefully, his name rings a bell. He was a key researcher in operant conditioning. We learned all about conditioning in our previous videos. This is the technique that is used to change or shape behaviors. A technique that therapists use is called a token economy. This is where the therapist will help the client by providing a token or a plastic coin after the client has done the desired behavior. Later on, these tokens can be traded for a variety of different rewards. This therapy has not only been just successful with therapists, but has also been successful in homes and classrooms as well. Next, we can look at the work of Albert Ellis. He 
He created the Rational Emote Behavior Therapy. This type of cognitive therapy works on changing our internal thought process about different situations. His therapy stems from the belief that a person will suffer because of their own self-defeating assumptions and works to show the person how irrational their thinking is. To understand this, let's look at a hypothetical example. Ellie breaks up with her romantic partner, Taylor. Taylor may think that they are a worthless person. Then they might get depressed when in reality this relationship just wasn't a good fit and Taylor deserves something better. This therapy would help Taylor understand that the self-defeating inner monologue was absurd and untrue. Lastly, there is Aaron Beck. Beck developed a type of psychotherapy called cognitive therapy or Beck therapy and his specialty was depression. The root of his therapy is focusing on how changing the person's thinking will change how they function. Beck would work on battling a person's negative thoughts about their situations, future, and themselves. This would help the individual to view life in a more healthy way and would change their negative self-talk. The therapist would use a technique of gentle questioning to help guide the individual to be aware of their irrational thinking. All right, and that's it for this video. In our next video, we'll expand on our conversation about how different psychological perspectives view and handle different disorders and treatments. But before that, you need to answer the review questions that are on the screen right now. And of course, check your answers in the comment section down below. And if you're finding value in this video, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future topic review videos. Plus, check out the Ultimate Review Packet for everything AP psychology related. It's a great resource that'll help get you an A in your class and a five on that national exam. As always, thank you so much for watching the video. I'm Mr. Sin and I'll see you next time online.